The wave of criminal acts in South Sudan is causing great concern as well. A UN-supported mobile court has now begun hearing cases in South Sudan's northern town of Bentium. The courts bring back legal justice to the town for the first time in more than four years. Legal proceedings will see 27 suspects go on trial over a period of two weeks. The last official session was held in December of 2013 before civilians and court officials fled the civil war that left almost 400,000 people dead. The mobile court comprises of two judges, two prosecutors, one investigator and two defense lawyers. We are working on the judicial system so that the accused can be tried first. They should either be charged or released if they didn't commit a crime. They should only be in jail if they did something wrong. No one should be held without trial which would mean that justice is delayed. There are places, including Bentu, where the administration could not bring in a judge to work because there isn't even a place to stay. There is no courthouse, there isn't equipment for the courtroom, or even police officers to work in the court. So, all this prevented the administration from trying to establish the old courts, including Bentu, and bring in the judges for them. Well, let's broaden this discussion a little bit more and find out exactly how dire the situation is in South Sudan. And joining me now is retired Brigadier General Mohammed. He is a senior advisor at the Horn Institute and an expert on UN military operations and peacekeeping. Brigadier General Mohammed, thank you for joining us on the link. As we mentioned earlier, we were discussing it seems like a never-ending war in South Sudan, and now the UN Security Council is concerned with justice dispensation. How, how should the government be dealing with this issue, particularly the issue of uh, sexual violence? Indeed, um, Beatrice, um, a great concern, and that is why the um, Security Council, the Secretary General, and um, the um, SG's uh, Special Representative on Sexual Violence in Conflict have raised uh, um, uh, concerns. And uh, really, uh, the government must take action on this, in fact, condemn these acts and bring all the perpetrators to, uh, uh, to court. I should mention, in terms of a slight background, that um, the um, recently signed revitalized agreement on the return of Comsan Sudan did provide for a comprehensive transitional justice system. Within the system, there's provision for a hybrid court. And therefore, the government must bring these perpetrators to act and ensure they have prosecuted and held accountable. Well, the large number of attacks against women and girls uh, are in Bentu, which is controlled by government forces, though. What should the government should be do what should the government be doing at this point though to enhance safety for the people there? Interesting indeed. Bentu is the headquarter of Unity State up in the north. Uh, and uh, um, you realize that uh, the government did commit um, in 2017 that they are party to uh, the agreement on uh, cessation of hostilities, protection of civilians, and humanitarian assistance. In this case, it's women and children going to collect water who are victims. So indeed, the government must be held accountable for the protection of every individual, in fact, every person in southern Sudan. So there is something that the UN Security Council is mentioning now, and there is a mobile court now in place there. But what should the international community, though, be doing to help South Sudan eradicate this uh, issue of sexual violence? You realize that before this current mobile court, no individuals were held accountable or brought to court. So indeed, the government uh, must uh, again come out uh, very, very... Uh, uh, the entire committee must come out in the first place and ask the government to put in place measures to act on these perpetrators. In the same token, we realize that the government can't do much in themselves. They need assistance from the social community in terms of investigations and inquiry. In the same token, this is still an area in conflict. In terms of development assistance, this is very important, and we must see this uh, coming in. In saying this, much more action is required in support of women and children, and of course, indeed, the actual victims of this uh, violence. And a final point there, though, is South Sudan finally on the road to recovery, on the road to stability, because the current ceasefire and the current uh, peace accord seems to be holding fairly well for the moment? Beatrice, a very cautious optimism. But I should mention that uh, for the first time, 
the recent agreement did provide a comprehensive review in terms of addressing the root causes of the conflict. Within that, they laid down provisions for institutional reforms. They laid down the ground for a constitutional review and amendment. They provided uh, uh, a process that will lead eventually to the elections. It ended very positive. In the same token, it has got a lot of support from within the country, and of course the regional and the national community. One of the key elements of this um, agreement is that other than what I've said now, it is providing stern action against spoilers. There's no room for spoilers to come in and mess up what is going on now. So we feel it is very strong, it is binding, and it will stay. And in saying this, let me mention also that one of the factors is very important. We talk about in conflict resolution the issue of right moment. This is the right moment. It can be no better. It's the right moment for Sudan. The population is tired of this war. The warring parties are tired of this war. And therefore, a strong agreement as it's in place now, is acceptable to all the parties, will definitely lead to a final resolution of the conflict in southern Sudan. All right, so retired Brigadier General Mohammed, thank you very much for joining us there.